Okay, so today what we're going to work on is the rational zero test and Descartes rule of signs. All right, so I'd like you to uh, do the evaluations and to try this. So put me on pause and then come back and check your answer. Okay, so let's take a look at the first one. We have f of x is equal to x squared. I'm looking for f of negative x. So I have negative x squared. Negative x squared, so that's negative x times negative x is positive x squared. So let's take a look at the next one. g of x is equal to x to the third power. Evaluate g of negative x. So it's negative x to the third power. So it's negative x times negative x is positive x squared times another negative x is negative x to the third. x to the fourth. So that's going to be negative x to the fourth power. And that's going to be negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x is going to be positive x to the fourth x to the fifth. So that's negative x to the fifth power. So that's negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x is going to be negative x to the fifth. And last one, x to the sixth. So it's negative x to the sixth power. So that's negative x times 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 negative x is going to be equal to positive x to the sixth. So notice that when you have an even exponent, even exponent here, and you're, when you're evaluating, it's always going to be positive because you're multiplying it out an even number of times. And when you have an odd exponent, it's always going to be negative. Okay, so uh, let's just talk about now the rational zero test. So it says, possible rational, rational zeros relates to the leading coefficient and the constant term of a polynomial. Possible rational zeros are, is equal to the factors of the constant term divided by the factors of the leading coefficient. When the leading coefficient is 1, the possible rational zeros of the factors of the, of, are the factors of the constant term because you're dividing by 1, so it's just going to be the constant term. So take a look at number 1. It says f of x is equal to x to the third minus 5x plus 2. So the plus 2, the 2 is your constant. And there's really a 1 in front here, so that's your leading coefficient. All right, so my possible rational 0, so I need my factors. So my factors of 2, because that's my constant term, the factors of 2 are 1 and 2, so it's going to be plus minus 2 and plus minus plus minus 1, sorry, and plus minus 2. Now, if I put that over my leading coefficient, my leading coefficient is 1, and the factors of 1 are 1, so it's plus minus 1. So this is really just plus minus 1 and plus minus 2. Okay, so now you're going to do a test, and you're going to test each one of these, and you're going to plug it into your function. So you can do f of 1, f of negative 1, f of 2, and f of negative 2. All right, so f of 1, so it's going to be 1 to the third minus 5 times 1 plus 2. Plug that into your calculator, and you get negative 2. Now you're going to try negative 1. So negative 1 to the third minus 5 times negative 1 plus 2 is equal to 6. N 2 to the third minus 5 times 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. So when I plug in 2... I actually get a zero here. So this is a rational zero. So then what we know that is that is x equals two is a zero. And then I also know then that x minus two is a factor. So when I get a zero, I know that that's a rational zero at that number. So let's try negative two. So negative two to the third minus five times negative two plus 2, well, that's equal to 4. So I have one rational 0, and that's when x is equal to 2. All right, let's try another one. So I have x squared minus 6x plus 1. So I want to know what are my rational zeros. So my, my constant is 1, so that means my factors are just plus minus 1. My leading coefficient is 1, so that's divided by plus minus 1, which is just plus minus 1. All right, so I'm going to test f of 1 and f of negative 1. So f of 1 is going to be 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 1. Plug it in your calculator, you get negative 4. 
negative 1 squared minus 6 times negative 1 plus 1. Plug that in, you calculate it, get 8. So notice, neither one of these, I got a 0. So there are no rational zeros. Okay, so there could be irrational zeros, or there could be imaginary roots, but there's no rational zeros here. Okay, so flip it over. Okay, so let's take a look at number three. Uh, so let's try to find the rational zero. So um, my, co my constant term is three, so that means my factors are plus minus one and plus minus three over the factors of the leading coefficient, which is two, so that's plus minus one, plus minus two. All right, so these are, this, so this is what I could have. I'm just gonna write it over here. So I could have one over one, I could have negative one over one, negative one over negative one, which is one, uh, three over one, I could have uh, one, ne negative one, one over negative one, which is the same thing as negative one, three over one, negative three over one, three over negative one, uh, and this keeps, just keeps going. There's so many of them. So in the end, what I actually have is plus minus one, plus minus three, plus minus three halves, and plus minus, plus minus a half. That's a plus, minus one half. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at one. So let's evaluate f of one. So I have two times one cubed, plus three times one squared, minus eight times one times plus three. So I'm going to get zero. Now, since I, I found a zero right away, then I can use a synthetic division to uh, try to find my other factors, and then I can find my zeros. So since I get a zero here, then I know x equals one is a zero. So now I'm gonna use synthetic division. So I have one on the outside, so it's 2, 3, negative 8, and 3. And I'm going to start by bringing down the 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. And 1 times 5 is 5. Negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. And then 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And then I get 0. So then I know obviously that one is a factor, so I know that I have x minus one times, now I can write this factor here, two times x squared, right, x squared because I started off with a cube, uh, plus five x minus three. Now I have this trinomial here, remember I got this factor from here, and then I got this factor from here. Now I have this trinomial that I could factor. So this trinomial factors so you could use your master product, I'm just going to do it quick. So we have 2x and x, and then we also have minus 1 and positive 3, and then I have my x minus 1. So now I have, these are my factors. So now I can get my zeros, and I have x is 1, which we already had, x is equal to positive 1 half, and x is equal to negative 3. So these are my zeros. So see how I did this without actually testing all of these over here. I found one that actually worked and then I used that to, uh, with synthetic division to get my other ones. All right, so let's try the next one. All right, so I have f of x is equal to 8x to the third minus 12x squared minus 4x plus 10. All right, so uh, my constant term is 10, so my factors are plus and minus one, plus minus two, plus minus five, and plus minus 10, all over plus minus one, because I have an eight, plus minus two, plus minus four, and plus minus eight. So these are my possible, so these are my possible zeros. I have positive negative one, positive negative two, positive negative five, positive negative 10, I have positive negative one half, positive negative one fourth, positive negative five halves, 
positive negative 5 fourths, positive negative 5 eighths, and positive negative 1 eighth. So I have this 20 possibilities. All right, so I don't want to have to go through all of them. So what you could do is use your calculator, graph it on your calculator, so put it in y equals, graph it, okay, to see which ones to test. So I'm going to write that down. Use calc to help determine which ones to check. Okay, so when I graph this, I look at my graph, and I notice that uh, my graph crosses the x-axis between negative 1 and 0. So my possible zeros are between negative 1 and 0. Okay, so the only ones then I want to check so the only ones, only ones I will check are the ones that are between negative 1 and 0. So I'm going to try, so try negative 1 half, negative 1 fourth, negative 5 eighths, and negative 1 eighth. Okay, so we're going to do f of negative 1 half. Now, you're going to plug that in your calculator. So tomorrow, remind me to show you actually how to plug this in your calculator without actually typing this whole thing in. It's really quick. So you're going to have to type it in tonight, and we get 8. But remind me tomorrow, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to do f of negative 1 fourth, and you get 10.125. We're going to do f of negative 5 eighths, and we get 5.86. And then we're going to do f of negative 1 eighth, and we get 10.29. And none of them are, none of them came out to be zero, so there are no rational zeros. Okay, so we got one more thing to do, so flip it over. Okay, so this is Descartes' rules of signs. So this will tell you what kind of signs your zeros will have. So it will tell you if you will have five positive zeros or three negative zeros. So look at f of x. And identify how many sign changes there are. This will tell you, this will give you your, I didn't realize it made it so big your at most positive real zeros. And look at f of negative x. So you're going to have to plug in negative x and evaluate. So plug it in and simplify. And then this will tell you how many, look to see how many sign changes there are. This will give you your at most negative real zeros. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. All right, so I'm looking for, state the possible number of positive and negative zeros for each function. All right, so I have f of x is equal to 5x to the fourth plus 14x squared minus 32. So from here to here, the sign doesn't change because I have a positive 5 and a positive 14. So that's nothing going on there. All right, so now from here to here, I have positive 14 and negative 32. That's one sign change. I have one sign change. So since I have one sign change, I will have one positive real zero. All right, now we have to do f of negative x. So it's 5 times negative x to the fourth plus 14 times negative x squared minus 32. All right, so remember, I have a negative x to the fourth. That's going to be positive x to the fourth. So that's still just 5x to the fourth. I have negative x squared is po as positive x squared, which is going to just keep this as positive 14x squared. And then I have minus 32. So there's no sign change here, but there is a sign change here. So there's one sign change. So this is going to be one negative. You have one negative real zero. Okay, so now let's look at number two. So 
So I have f of x equals 3x to the fourth minus 35x squared plus 12. So I have a sign change here and I have a sign change here. So I have two sign changes. So I have, so let's write that down, two sign changes, which means I have two pos positive real zeros or I have zero positive real zeros. So if you don't have one, so if this number is not a one, if it's a two, it's always you go down um, every other number and that'll give you how many possible positive real zeros you'll have. All right, so now we have to do f of negative x. So it's three times negative x to the fourth minus 35 ne times negative x squared plus 12. So this is going to be three x to the fourth minus 35x squared plus 12. So I have a sign change here and a sign change here, so it's the same thing. So it's two sign changes, which is going to be two negative real zeros or zero negative, that's a negative, real zero. Okay, and let's try number three. Okay, so this is a long one here. So I have a sign change here, 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 and here. So I have one, two, three, four, five sign changes. Five sign changes. Which means I will have either five, three, or one positive real zeros. Okay, now I'm going to do f of negative x. So it's eight times negative x to the sixth minus two times negative x to the fifth plus 22 times negative x to the fourth minus 10 times negative x to the third plus 12 times negative x squared minus six times negative x. So this comes out to be uh, 8x to the 6th. Um, so this here becomes negative x to the 5th, but then times a negative, that's going to be positive. 2x to the 5th uh, plus 22x to the 4th plus 10x to the 3rd plus 12x squared plus 6x. So notice there are none of my signs change. So that would mean there are zero changes. So zero, I should put sign changes. So therefore there are zero negative real zeros. Okay, so that's it and we'll practice in class tomorrow. Have a good night.